I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our water and chemical additives tutorials. This particular tutorial is all about sizing. Now I was going to do everything in this. I was going to do sizing definitions and sizing materials but I decided that was a bit too long so I split it up. This one is just about sizing definitions and the next one will be about the sizing materials. But before we start, it's probably worth talking about the purpose, what is sizing and the purpose of sizing. So sizing is stopping the penetration of liquid into the surface. So that's the strict definition of sizing, stopping the penetration of liquids into the surface of the sheet. And we do it because we want to keep whatever's inside dry. So just before we get going, um, a little brief sort of history of sizing. It started off with the Chinese trying to use rice water, but that really didn't work very well. Europeans had a great idea. We did uh, sizing using animal gelatin. Uh, it was a bit soft, so we came up with another system, gelatin alum. Then we moved on to rosin alum, which dominated the world for so many years. And then from there we moved on to AKD, alkyl ketene dimer, because of the problems of rosin alum. The acidity of the old rosin alum systems damaged the paper, and of course it prevented people using calcium carbonate, which they wanted to do. And then finally, uh, we came up with the ASA, alkenyl succinic anhydride. In this video, I'm going to talk about, as I said, just definitions. In the next video, we'll talk about these last three uh, sizing materials, rods and alum systems, AKD and ASA. So, here we go with a, a set of definitions and things that you need to know. So, first definition, wet end sizing. In the beginning, of course, even before wet end sizing, they used to take a whole sheaf of paper and dunk it into a tub of sizing solution and then pull it out, put it in a press, squeeze out all the excess moisture and then dry it. That was known as tub sizing. When things moved on, we came to wet end sizing which means you can put the sizing agent in anywhere in the wet end starting right back at the hydropulper or the beta or anywhere along the pipework right up to putting it directly into the floor box of the machine if you wish putting sizing in anywhere up to and including the floor box is known as wet end sizing With wet end sizing, the size is all the way through the thickness of the paper. It's on the top, it's on the bottom, and it's all the way through. If sizing does a really good job, then all that size in the middle of the paper is actually wasted because the water never ever gets there. The surface keeps it out. So that was why they came along with surface sizing. So the definition of surface sizing is where sizing agents are added only to the surface of the sheet and this is usually done in the size press and uh, again we'll have another video on the evolution of size presses later the third definition is on machine sizing now this is a bit confusing it sounds like you're doing the sizing on the machine completely wrong nothing to do with that on machine sizing really means what degree of sizing has been developed in the sheet while it was just on the machine so you take the reel at the end of the machine and you don't do anything else to it you take a sample of paper and you test it and whatever sizing you get is the on machine sizing value usually done in cob so that's on machine sizing. 
The other thing that goes with on machine sizing is cured sizing. Now, some sizing products, when the sheet comes off the end of the machine, it's completely sized and that's the end of it. Other materials, you take it off the end of the machine and you can hardly measure any degree of sizing. But when you wait a few days, the sizing magically develops. Of course, we can't wait to test it. So what we do is we artificially age it. So we take a sample of paper from the reel, we put it in an oven at under a standard set of conditions, standard temperature, standard time, usually something like 15 minutes at 1 or 5 centigrade, something like that. And that's now developed the sizing that the sheet will do in about two or three weeks' time. So that is known as cured sizing. So cured, the definition of cured sizing is sizing tested after the sheet has been cured off machine. The next one is sizing efficiency. This is really a, a mathematical thing, a number thing that no one ever uses anymore. So it's the level of sizing achieved per unit of size added. So if you've got a cob value of five and you are adding size a particular, at a particular rate an hour, you divide the cob by the rate per hour and you get the sizing efficiency. Uh, as I say, it's a very, very old calculation that I've not seen used for at least 20 years. Then we've got reverse sizing. Again, it's another strange term that's not what it sounds it's like. Reverse sizing sounds like you've unsized the product. But again, nothing like that. Reverse sizing applies only to rosin alum systems. Now, in the normal way of producing rosin alum sized paper, first of all, you put the rosin in, and then later, down the pipeline, you add the aluminium iron in whatever form, aluminium sulfate, PAC, sodium aluminate. That works okay if you're in soft water areas, but if you are in a hard water area, it's full of calcium and magnesium ions. If you put the rosin in first, the rosin will react with the calcium and the magnesium and form some horrible sticky materials. And by the time you put the alum in, all the rosin has been used up. So reverse sizing is what you use in hard water areas. And you simply reverse the order of the components. So with reverse sizing, you put the alum in first. And then later on down the pipe, you put the rosin in. So now, sort of milling around in the stock, you've got aluminium ions and calcium ions and magnesium ions. Calcium's two plus, magnesium's two plus, aluminium is three plus. So it's got a bit more oomph, more power. So when the three ions fight for the rosin, the aluminium wins because it's got a bigger charge. And then you get the right sort of side. You get your um, rosin aluminates, not the calcium aluminate, not the calcium rosinates, not the magnesium rosinates, you get the aluminium rosinates. So the definition of reverse sizing is where alum is added before the rosin size. Then we've got fugitive sizing. There used to be a TV program on UK TV and on American TV called The Fugitive, which was a guy who was always running away and hiding from the police. And uh, fugitive sizing's a bit like that, really. You make some paper with a sizing agent in, you measure the cob value and it's okay, it's good. And then maybe a few days or a few weeks later, you come and measure the degree of sizing again, and boom, no sizing. The cob value is uh, sky high. But, so it's, it's hidden, but if you ran that piece of paper just through the drying section, you heated it up in some way, 
then the sizing magically comes back again. So fugitive sizing is where the sheet has been sized, the sizing goes away, and then heating brings it back. Then we have sizing reversion. That's really an extreme uh, situation with regard to uh, sizing. In this case, your sheet is sized, the sizing goes away, and nothing you can do can bring it back. It's gone forever. And then you've got this term hard sized. This is a sort of a, a qualitative expression for how well sized your sheet is. If you have a lot of sizing agent in and it's very water repellent and it really holds the water out on the surface, you would say it was hard sized. So you get, as I say, you get, as you see there, very low cum values. The opposite of hard sized is soft sized. So I'm sure you can guess what this is. This is where you only use a small amount of sizing agents and it will absorb some water. So it's only soft sized. And then the very final definition, one of my favorite words, one of my two favorite words in the paper industry is water leaf. And a water leaf sheet means no sizing agent has been added at all. So you take a sheet of paper, throw it in some water, and it'll just fall apart because you've not put any sizing agent in whatsoever. Okay, well, thank you for uh, listening to all those definitions to do with sizing. I hope uh, I didn't send any of you off to sleep. So please feel free to comment, uh, leave me any feedback that you wish, and I look forward to seeing you on another Paper Classroom video shortly. Goodbye for now.